So, yeah. I haven't made a game or uploaded a video for 17 months. And yeah, that's kind of a long time. Oops. Today though, after so long, I'm gonna see if I still even know how to make a game by challenging myself to make one in just 12 hours, but without any external help. That means I can't use Google or ChatGPT or anything like that. All I can use is my own memory. Given how often weird bugs come up or there's things you just don't know how to do in programming, this challenge might actually be pretty difficult. Of course, before I can make a game, I need an idea, because otherwise there will be no game. So, technically breaking the rules for just a second before the challenge, I asked ChatGPT for a theme for my game, and it gave me Shadows and Light. And so using that, I thought of some ideas for the game. Well, so maybe you play as a shadow, so like, yeah, that's a shadow, right? And you can, like, climb on other shadows, but what you gotta do is avoid, like, lights and lamps. So, if you walk under this lamp, you will die because you're a shadow, and if you go under the light, you're obviously gonna die. I don't know, does this make any sense? Hmm. I might try making it and see how it goes. Hmm. <laughs> And so with my idea, I began making the game. Now, even though there were some issues that kind of enraged the whole game dev community a while ago, I'm gonna be using Unity because that's what I know how to use the most and I can't really learn a new engine from just my memory, I think, at least. Right off the bat, I made a square. And while at first I had a bit of trouble remembering what components I had to add and how to actually move something, I was able to get the square to move left and right and stop as well. Now of course, since this is a platformer game, there needs to be jumping too, but that's not quite as simple to add. In order to jump in a game and not fly, you need a way to check that you're on the ground. Not gonna lie, in the past when doing this, I kind of just copied and pasted code, so it wasn't actually that easy to do this from memory. Luckily though, after some of my own actual thinking, I was able to come up with a solution, where I used a trigger collider at the player's feet and checked if that was touching the ground. And that seemed to work, so yeah, nice, jumping, cool. At this point, even with just some simple movement, I noticed that a lot of the skills from the past just seemed to be coming back to me, and I was already getting quite comfortable with Unity again and with coding in C Sharp. Speaking of the past though, as I start to make some actual sprites and animations for the player, you're probably wondering why I haven't made a game for 17 months in the first place. And look, to be honest, I think it ultimately comes down to the fact that making this kind of content is really draining. I don't need to give it hands because it's a shadow. Then we'll just give it a nice surround head. Instead of having to just make a video or just make a game, game dev YouTubers like me have to make both which requires that careful balance of making a game that's good enough, but also making something that's interesting and clickable enough for the end video. And while it might not sound that hard, it means that you have to put a lot of effort in, and often make things that maybe you don't want to actually be making. I mean, it looks kind of like a shadow, I guess. You know what, I'll leave that for now. Probably I want to make a walking animation. I think that's the main reason you see so many game dev YouTubers just disappear. Okay, that does not look like running, that looks like dancing, so that's not great. And that huge effort, combined with the Unity runtime fee controversies, as well as my own busy schedule, just made me stuck. You know what, I reckon that's good enough. For now, let's export this. I tried learning new engines, and tried coming back to making games, but every time I just got distracted or bored, and nothing ever came out of it. I really wanted to make more videos and games, but I just didn't, and I'm sorry. That's why this game is so important though. Hopefully, if I can make something good, it'll be able to give me back the drive and passion that I once had, and make me realise what's so special about game development and YouTube. Alright, so I think that I've got some animations which are looking pretty good now. So yeah, as you can see, there's running, and when you jump, there's a bit of an animation, it's a bit fast, but you can kind of see it. And there's also a falling animation. So yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Oh, that's a bit interesting there. Now that I have some pretty nice looking animations for the player, with 9 hours left, it's time to start thinking about the actual game mechanics. After some consideration, I realised that the original concept I had 
pretty much wouldn't work and didn't make much sense anyway. So I thought of this new idea that still fits the theme where basically the background is constantly getting darker and you can collect light across the level which makes the background lighter. And so you've got to like speed around the level as fast as possible before dark. That could be pretty cool. Straight away, using some simple code to gradually change the color of a sprite, I was able to make the background get darker over time. And I made suns which reverse that and replenish your light. First making a sprite for it after several attempts, and then giving it particles behind, and of course making it functional, making the background lighter when you run into it. After that, I added a tile map with some sprites I made, meaning I could build levels easily by placing blocks on this grid. While doing this though, I noticed that it felt kind of annoying not being able to go onto small gaps like this. So I thought it would be cool to add sliding to the game, which definitely would fit with the kind of speedrun style I'm going for. And so yeah, using a lot of code and decreasing the collider size and also making even more animations, I made it so you can slide if you're running and keep your speed, and if you're not running then you'll just crouch and have a lower speed. Honestly, with the sliding added, which felt really smooth, and the little test level I made, I actually spent a decent amount of time just jumping and running and sliding around the level, almost proud of what I'd created so far. It's a feeling that I really missed in the last 17 months, and I'm really happy that this project is helping me experience it again. Next though was death, because there needs to be some kind of challenge. I made it so if you fall down a hole, you die, or if you hit these spikes which I made, you also die. And of course, if it goes fully dark, you also die. And for all of these, there's another animation and a nice little fade transition between scenes. Oh yeah, and there's clouds too, which kind of have like a parallax thing going on. One thing you might notice though, is that the game is feeling awfully quiet. So it's time to add some sounds. I remember this website I used for making 8-bit sounds pretty easily, and so I used that for the dying and sun collecting sounds. But I knew that since the player runs around, I wanted some footstep sounds as well. So in an attempt to make something, I basically just tried making sounds in front of my microphone, like by hitting the desk or hitting a tissue. And honestly, the sounds that came out of that sounded surprisingly similar to footsteps. So I used them, and wrote some code that plays a random one a few times a second. I also recorded a sound for sliding, but this time by dragging a tissue across the desk. And that one sounded pretty good too. The only problem was you can kinda hear my computer fans in the background. But um, oh well. Finally, with a few more polishing additions like this slider showing the light level, this halo effect when you collect a sun, and quite a few bug fixes, it was time to make some actual levels. The only problem was that by this point, there was only an hour left. So, really locking in now, I quickly went through and placed tiles and spikes and stuff, and I was able to make two different levels with their own unique kind of layouts. And then the timer ran out. Oh, the timer is up. I'm gonna be honest, when I ran out of time, there were a few things that were just broken. Like, there's this weird glitching effect when you run, and the second level is technically not possible. So I did give myself a bit more time to fix some of those important things. Oh my god, no way that was the fix. And later export the game. But eventually it was finished. And I can't believe it. After 17 months of not making a single game or a single video, I've finally managed to complete one. Even if it's not the most insane game, and there's only two levels, and also it's really difficult, I'm really proud of this result. And I had so much fun making it and coming back to game development. So if you want, go check it out below. And please guys, don't unsubscribe, because I very well may make more videos in the future.